uh, it's been a week. Sorry for the long delay. I um, have been uh, quite uh, entertained with uh, doing a lot of stuff on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, you've probably seen all the all the little things I've been doing there. Uh, but I have a lot of uh, news for you, and um, I was thinking I will do this while it's still not well before midnight in Europe, and um, see if um, if we can get a little bit of a um, uh, sort of a update to what I've been doing this this past uh, week. So as you, uh, if you heard the last podcast, you'll know that I've been trying to uh, be productive uh, in a way uh, by selecting like seven major things that I should do each week. And um, since these are sort of projects that I really would like to finish, um, some of them are kind of hard to measure exactly how long things will take. So um, obviously you will not always uh, be on track. But uh, what I did uh, the week before this week was that I just pushed forward the stuff that I still hadn't done. And uh, among those things were, for instance, uh, pricing the Egypt trip. That's been done. It's now up and uh, priced already on the Seven Wonders Birding tour page. So you can check that out. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very nice itinerary. I will fill in with a little bit more details on uh, history, archaeology, there's a lot, a lot of history in in uh, in, um, in Egypt and a little bit of the birds that we will be seeing along the way as well. I, I'm getting information back from my local contacts in Egypt. And that is in February. And it's combined with the Petra trip as well, uh, like, like an extension to Petra. And I was looking through, uh, you know, some offers uh, for, that the big birding companies have for Egypt. There are not a whole lot of them, actually. They're, it seems like, as I've been sort of touching this point before, that many of the birding companies are directed very much towards hardcore birding. And uh, so it's like two types of birders that would come to Egypt. One is the type that wants to increase the uh, um, West Palearctic list. There's a number of African species that you can just get sort of central African species that you can just get like in southern Egypt and that will still count as West Palearctic. Well, our trip it does not have that focus. It doesn't have a focus on West Palearctic birds uh, or to fill in that, um, fill in that, uh, those sort of, uh, yeah, empty spaces that you have there on your West Palearctic list. Uh, that's uh, not feasible to do if you only have a week. Uh, what is feasible to do is to uh, visit most of the cultural sites and to get a good feel for the bird life of Egypt. And so that's what we want to do in this trip. We want to see all the major historical sites, all the, bio, uh, uh, all the world heritage sites, including the pyramids of Giza and, uh, and uh, Abu Simbel and uh, Aswan, Luxor and the Valley of the Kings, etc. Uh, all that is included and it's also included a Nile cruise. So uh, that's sort of the thing that you really want to have on your Egypt trip if it's going to be like a bucket list thing to tick off. And it will be just as good for a birder as it would be for a non-birder. Um, um, a non-birder could perfectly well go on this trip as well. The birding will be done mostly in, in early mornings and in the late afternoons when it's not too hot and most of the sites will be visited, especially those that are not in the blazing sun, they will be visited during the, the heat of the day. Uh, so um, it's a very nice little itinerary where you can combine the, both things, the, the history, archaeology, the birding and uh, get a sense of uh, yeah, Egypt. Um, so the whole trip takes eight days. And uh, after that, it's uh, connected to also flying directly to Amman in Jordan. And um, you say Jordan or Jordania? 
I think you say Jordan in English, right? Yeah. Jordanian in Swedish. Anyway, uh, Jordania in Spanish. Uh, so you fly to Amman, which is the capital of Jordan, and uh, from there uh, um, there be uh, we'll do self drive down to uh, Petra, and there's a couple of birds that we pick up on the way there as well. Do do a little bit of birding on the way, uh, but that I mean it's mainly sort of a cultural extension. But the Sinai Sinai uh, rose finch is on the itinerary, and um, yeah, a couple of others, Palestine sunbird, uh, etc. So uh, yeah, it looks like all in all ten days, and. Uh, uh, We'll see if this happens now in February. Hopefully by then the pandemic is over and we can do this trip. Uh, we may also do uh, a, pre, a couple of pre-days, at least one full day of birding in uh, um, for people that wants to do a little bit of um, snorkeling. So a, a good place to fly in. And we're also, uh, I also heard that it's a problem to fly into Cairo because they're very meticulous in the customs there. So, but if you fly into Hurgada, Hurgada, uh, right in the, um, well, it's in the Suez uh, Sea, but sort of connected to the Red Sea, right? Uh, you will, uh, they will be more accustomed to people actually carrying optical equipment there and you will have less of a problem. So it may be a good idea to fly in there and then you have a day of snorkeling or so. And then you can also look for some of those uh, uh, very special, um, a very very special gulls there uh, you have uh, for instance the um, uh, was it a white what's it called that white-eyed gull and uh, sooty gulls uh, they're both uh, easy in Hurgada and um, maybe one can also do some twitches for uh, spotted sand grouse and crowned sand grouse uh, well, it remains to be seen on that on that little pre-trip thing and I think you should be able to do most in like one full day, but I, I'll have to study up a little bit on that. But maybe we'll do like one day of uh, birding and one day of snorkeling um, as a pre-trip in Hurgada. All right, uh, so that's that about uh, about that. Uh, now to get back to uh, the talk here, I'll see what, what I am planning. So uh, the productivity is in check. I uh, done that. I also done my newsletter for Seven Wonders Birding, an update on that. Um, I also, uh, yeah, I also launched this um, a lot of uh, uh, things here on the um, on Facebook, and it has to do with the uh, One Thousand Birds project. Um, I had thought that I was going to finish this past week with the uh, non-passerines. Uh, that's not going to be possible and it's not going to even be possible this week. And uh, so um, I've been through a, a few of the criteria for how uh, how I am um, selecting these birds. And um, it's basically uh, through the um, Birds of the World by Austin and Singer. Uh, parents, Encyclopedia of Birds, and the Critical and Endangered Species listed by BirdLife. Uh, when it came to um, gulls, um, it didn't really work that well. First of all, there was a lot of very, very common gulls that, like herring gull, etc., that you probably would not want to have on your thousand best birds list. Uh, plus, there were, uh, well, they were mentioned in parents, but but uh, not in uh, Austin Singer. Uh, classic gulls like ivory gull and and uh, Ross's gull etc that you know definitely sort of qualify so um and then they came down to the uh, threatened birds and um, those were four species of terns and one gull and uh, in most cases um so the reason why i want to include the threatened uh, the endangered and the critically endangered birds in the thousand species list is that I think it's a good idea to have these uh, small adventures included, especially if that means that you are spreading a bit of your eco dollars to towards projects where um, eco dollars are needed. And in we've seen that happening here in Peru that just with a very small amount of birders actually going for very specific birds, 
that can make the change for saving the habitat when you get the local community involved. It does not have to be a lot. And the more the merrier, right, for many of these birds. But when it comes to gulls and terns, really, uh, I, it doesn't feel like it will make any difference whether people will go and see them or not. It, it's, it's other types of actions that will be needed. And obviously the focus on, on, on those uh, birds will be more of a, a political standpoint and you know giving voices to uh, your local birding bird conservation organizations by becoming members and so forth that is probably more important thing when it comes to uh, preserving wetlands and the colonies where these uh, these species breed etc so um i decided that i would have a uh, like a vote on the um, uh, I put this on the World Birding Tours web uh, Facebook uh, group. So it's World Birding Tours. You can check it out. And um, I uh, nominated already like the really, really spectacular uh, terns and gulls. And it also skimmers were sort of, uh, they're included in the same Laridae family. They were also sort of um, nominated from the beginning. So you, you don't really have to vote for those. but what else should people vote for? And I, I decided that would, there should be like 20 Laridae in total on the on the top thousand list. So that vote is uh, being carrying uh, is carried out uh, right now. And uh, so you can check that out on Facebook. Uh, hopefully, most of you guys are on Facebook. Um, but if not, the uh, you can still see it just by. I think you can still see it not being a member of, uh, of Facebook. Just clicking the links uh, to the group, and that I, I am, well, at least I, I think I put it in the newsletter. So if you get my newsletter, if you get Seven Wonders Birding's newsletter, you will have gotten the links to this uh, contest. I also did a very similar contest uh, when it came down to lapwings and uh, and plovers. And the same there, I had a few one, a few of those that were sort of um, nominated from scratch, and those included the ones that are uh, were endangered, and those that were sort of depicted in in uh, Singer, especially. And uh, but when looking through the handbook of the birds of the world of the lapwings and plovers, you realize that you know they're all they're all. <laughs> They're all great, and uh, to choose uh, which ones to uh, include or not uh, turned out to be very difficult. So I didn't want to take those decisions myself. So rather, I put another poll up on Facebook, and that is on the group called "I Love Shorebirds" or "I Heart Shorebirds." Uh, that's a close group. So if you're not a member of the group, you will not be able to see the poll. You have to become a member of the group to actually be able to see the poll um, at all, right? So um, do us a favor, uh, become members of these groups. Uh, so right now we're running three different contests on Facebook. One is on 363 hummingbirds and one is on uh, world birding tours. And the third one is on I love shorebirds. So the one on 363 hummingbirds, so I, I've been sort of hinting that this will carry on um, in future weeks as well. So right now we're sort of selecting which 25 species should be um, chosen together with the 25 that are already listed as endangered and critical by bird life. So, um, there's an additional 25 species that are, will be added and there you have like 55 different choices on the page uh, to select. But that's not all of the contest. Now, here comes the nice uh, thing and that's also in the title of this uh, uh, vlog today. Uh, we're going to do a Hummingbird World Cup 2020. And so uh, the 16 uh, hummingbirds that get most votes in this uh, voting procedure on the 363 Hummingbirds uh, Facebook group. They will be nominated for the uh, mm. uh, for the groups in the sort of the World Cup when it starts. And then I'm going to do a similar one for the 25 species that are listed as endangered and critical. So that that one will start on Sunday. Uh, so uh, 
all in all, and, and, and once this is done, we're actually going to have uh, 16 from each group. So in t all in all, 32 different hummingbirds. And they will be divided in eight different groups, just like the World Cup, the Football World Cup. Or, yeah, it's foot, uh, the real football, you know, the ones that we, you play with the foot. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to start those group plays. And uh, so I will present four species at a time uh, once this is done and uh, leave it for like three days and then comes the next group. And then after that, uh, I'll be doing the, uh, the uh, um, you know, we, we're going to go to playoff, to quarterfinals, etc. So from each group, there will be two um, hummingbirds selected and they will be going to the playoffs uh, further further on. So uh, anyway, this uh, this will be a lot of fun. So check that out, 363 hummingbirds. And um, um, I'm going to finish this off. Um, just have a few more things that I wanted to tell you. Let's see what's on the list here. Productivity, we've done the hummingbird contest, a uh, thousand birds. And the newsletter I told you has been sent up, out. Now, uh, it's only go it goes out to some 900 people only, and I usually get like 40% of uh, clicks on that in terms of people that are opening it. And uh, then not that, uh, maybe another, maybe about 10% that are actually clicking on any of the links. So it's hard to reach out with the, uh, with these uh, newsletters, but it it's got a lot. It's it's got, it's fairly short this time in a way. And if you don't subscribe to the Seven Wonders Birding newsletter, please do. Uh, so uh, just for your information, I have two different newsletters. One, uh, Seven Wonders Birding. I only keep uh, the sort of the bucket list birding uh, aspects of the tour company Seven Wonders Birding in that newsletter. Uh, on the other newsletter, on the other hand, the Colibri uh, News. Um, birding news uh, newsletter I put in a lot of personal stuff there as well so it, a little bit about you know, running and music and stuff uh, things that I updates here and there that I hear in the birding world and uh, whatever comes into mind a little bit like these uh, vlogs in a way but but in in, in, a, in a written mode and with the uh, links and so forth so um, you can check those out if you want to subscribe to either or of them. Uh, for Word, uh, Seven Wonders Birding, just enter the Seven Wonders Birding webpage and you will get a, uh, a pop-up there uh, that will prompt you to, uh, to sign up. And when it comes to the Colibri newsletter, uh, you do that on the Colibri Expeditions blog. And you can check out, for instance, the Satipa Road uh, project on the blog. And that's on the Colibri Expeditions uh, dot com uh, website slash blog and, and you will find all that information there all right so uh coming down to getting things done i've started a few 30 day challenges uh just basically from the day that i uh well from august one actually um so um i was thinking now that i've turned 60 uh, i need to um, get in shape and uh, as you remember I did a little bit to see what my uh, my baseline was with uh, doing uh, uh, my pull-ups or chin-ups or whatever you call them, um, and um, I decided that I would not try to pursue uh, uh, push-ups or or any um, uh, crunches because that's already part of another program that I'm doing that that is called Seven, and Seven is uh, like a high-intensity High interval, in, high intensity interval training program that lasts only seven minutes, and there are a bunch of apps in the uh, in the uh, that you can get on Android and on iPhone, and you can just put that on your phone, and they're free. The original Seven app uh, is, um, I think, it's a Seven in turquoise color or something like that, but it's really great with a lot of. Uh, um, graphics how to do the exercises and once you've done it for two months then if you do it every day and uh, then you get a free uh, uh, a free version of uh, of, of, of the uh, uh, another workout so the different workouts you can do but the standard one is 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 a really good old body workout now I 
I've been trying to do that. I'd like to do it every day, but I noticed when I tried to get started last time that I wasn't really quite in shape. So after two, three days of doing push-ups, I was totally out of it and I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So I decided now, uh, since I've been on the app before and I have a couple of the workouts that are actually, that I've gotten for free, I'm just alternating those workups, uh, workouts. And one of them is actually a stretching exercise. So I can do a seven every day and without getting exhausted. And the thing that I'm not really good at is the arm strength. I'm not good at that. So the push-ups, anything with push-ups is just forget it. And I'm not very, I'm not super strong in core either. So uh, I, I can do like, you know, a, a regular plank and so forth. But when it comes to um, mountain climbers or or plank jacks and stuff like that, I, I'm, I get pretty tired. But anyway, it, it's good to have that training. There is another um, uh, thing that I'm doing, and it's called, uh, it, and it's actually a 30-day challenge. It's Kinetic Revolution, I think it's called. Look that up. They have a 30-day challenge, Kinetic uh, Revolution, a and it's for runners, right? So it's a little bit to try to get those. I, I talked in my last uh, uh, vlog, I talked about the uh, the hip movement you know and and so it's uh, it's exercises that actually strengthen your hip mobility and your hip strength and uh, that is very important if you are going to run fast so uh, if you're into running and you want to get better at running uh, have a look at that and it's not difficult there's no difficult exercise but it's very good balances balance exercises and balances uh, and exercises for your um, for your hamstrings and for your hip and um, a great program so I'm now on day five on that and I'm feeling quite uh, content that I'm trying to get that through so uh, 30 day challenges are are maybe the best way of actually trying to uh, start new habits and um, there is uh, one particular um, a sort of um, yeah one of these sort of uh, help self-help prophets that I'm uh, I'm following it's called the um, miracle it's called the miracle morning yeah I think it's a miracle morning Hal Hal something now he has something that he calls uh, savers so it's basically trying to get up early and do this uh, one hour program of uh, different um things some meditations some um, that's the s the a stores uh, stands for affirmations and so you sort of talk to yourself and yes i am a three-hour marathoner etc you know you have a few mantras that you talk over um one is uh, v for visual visualization and that, that could be what you are sort of thinking of doing this week and it could be my sort of my seven points for instance that could be the visualization then you have the e for exercise and uh, doing a seven is is a great uh, way of doing that i'm also uh, doing yoga every day so there's another on my 30-day challenges and the uh, r is for uh, is for reading so you try to read something every day some uh, fiction or biography or something that you can learn from and the last one is uh, script, uh, scribing, the S for scriber, uh, scribing or writing. So you write something, yeah. So I, I, I usually do like a daily note on, on uh, I use Evernote. And so I do a, like a daily note and, and see uh, what I, you know, what I should do on, on a daily basis and sort of get some of my ideas out in, on paper and so forth. Uh, so uh, yeah. 30 day challenges good way of actually uh, getting some new habits and uh, if you're thinking of this the key thing don't do what i'm doing right now try to do several 30 day challenges at once that's usually not a good idea uh, but do try to concentrate on one and if you get bored maybe uh, maybe you do the 30 day challenge that you do it in a weekly in a weekly fashion so if you want to try like four different things that you think that you should really do uh, try try the seven um, uh, my strategy with seven small points that you do every week 
So you have little projects that you do. Um, so you have one project for every day of the week. And then you, um, and it, it doesn't have to be work related. It will also have something that you say, all right, this weekend I should not use my phone and just spend time with the family on Sunday, right? Uh, for instance, or something like that, or something particular that you want to do uh, for your family, for your loved ones, etc. And, and do that as one of your projects for the week. Don't just make it all of it work related. Um, that calls for disaster. And um, so you can do that for a 30 day period and you just sort of interchange these things uh, as you go along. And um, you can sort of try to build in one habit in this first week, whether you continue it the next week or not. It doesn't really matter that much. You just take a new habit that you will sort of conclude for for the seven days. And if you remember, that's fine. But have, have small set small little goals for yourself for every day. Right. Um, there are two more points here on my list. Um, I have been uh, listening to all the episodes of Ken Barron's and Charlie Hess's podcast. Um, and it's called now Naturally Adventurous. Um, I'm sad to see that they are not doing it like uh, doing it with their uh, uh, like uh, on YouTube. Uh, it's not video anymore, uh, at least not the last one. But the stories they are telling are just fantastic stories, and they are doing countdowns, both of them, uh, Ken and Charlie, of the ten best bird experiences they have ha have had in their long. Uh, birding life. Most of these experiences are from th their own birding, not when they've been tour guiding, but some really amazing stories. And uh, so the last one was with Charlie, um, uh, episode three, he was doing his number five and number four. Uh, the first one was uh, a great story about the Japanese uh, crested ibis. Absolutely amazing. And he went for that bird last year. There's now a Sort of free living population of uh, of uh, the main island of Japan. Something that I will definitely do on my next Japan trip as a little extension uh, for myself. If anyone wants to join me, that's that's great. But it's definitely one of my twitches that I will do. Um, so talking about Japan, if you want to do the five day Japan tour with me next year in February, late February, uh, it's time to start booking that because we need to book the places for the uh, uh, the uh, Blackestone's fish owl very important to, to get get going with the bookings for Japan next year um, and the number four on Charlie's list was uh, horned guan a great story really really great story so check that out and uh, uh, they uh, they are dying to get more listeners to their podcast but it, it is a great podcast and and the previous episode with Ken was also fantastic, had some really fantastic stories to tell. So uh, looking forward to uh, episode number three. It should be coming out uh, soon, I guess, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll see. And um, so uh, last but not least, uh, the COVID-19 update here in Peru. It's, uh, I was already mentioned last week, it's not looking that good. Uh, we have uh, increasing numbers again. Uh, remember, I've been t telling you in previous, like in all of July, it's been pretty stable with the new uh, new uh, cases of infections uh, on a daily basis. It was pretty stable for a while and it was under 4,000. Well, now it's up to 6,000, even 7,000 been peaking up some days the last week. Uh, and uh, that does not look good. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly where the uh, the spread is, but as I have been mentioning before, they've locked down s uh, some departments of Peru or continued lockdown some uh, provinces in, in some uh, departments, like in Cusco, for instance, are still closed. Um, it also means that it, although Lima is not closed uh, on paper, it also means that people are quite nervous seeing these numbers. And so it's my guiding for local birders has completely died and no one is interested in doing that. Uh, personally, I don't think it's a major thing if you are, you know, doing your uh, share of uh, keeping distance and taking all the measurements that uh, precautions that you're supposed to take. But uh, people are just too nervous 
and so uh, I'm lying lying a bit low. I I try to you know see whether people were interested or not for this weekend, but I I'm not getting any response. So I will lay low on that. Uh, fortunately, I I have uh, been getting. Um, as part of the sort of uh, stimulation that the government is doing, I have been give, given my 25% uh, of my pension fund uh, available uh, for my my use and uh, disposal. And uh, the first part, it's in two installments. The first part has been paid out. I'm surprised how little that was. So it means that I probably will have to <laughs> have to keep on working after I'm after I'm 65 but that's all right we'll just go traveling the, the world right uh, so no problem there anyway uh, but um, so uh, at least uh, I'm you know I'm not totally uh, out of <laughs> cash right now so that, that's a good thing however the uh, Satipa Road project is still on uh, it means that we will not be able to do that yet and uh, we start doing it in September, hopefully, when the uh, uh, the lockdown is down, and hopefully by then we're all, people are sort of a little bit less suspicious about traveling here in Lima. Um, but um, uh, funding is still needed. Uh, we have about five hundred dollars now, so there's a long way to go. And if you check out the uh, world, um, the um, what am I saying? The Satipa Road um, project on uh, colibriexpedition.com/blog. You will find there uh, a lot of new ways of actually making uh, uh, transfer money, and and the easiest way with it, with actually losing a lot of money is by doing it with transfer wise. And there are links there also. I put together actually a full blog page on my own blog on gunnarengblom.com uh, how to uh, ma how to make use of transfer wise to send money this way. And if you are among the third three first ones are actually using like a little sharing code there uh, to transfer money. You can do that for free uh, and it doesn't cost you anything to do. It, well, it's like a minimum amount, I think of like, it could be about 200, $200 or so, or 200 pounds. I, I, I can't remember now. It's like a minimum, but you can transfer that for free and you, uh, it will also award uh, my account with another 20 pounds. So it's a great way if you are thinking of uh, helping out with this project and you want to transfer around that sort of $250, $300 or whatever uh, to, um, to the project, you can do that for, without paying any fees and make use of this uh, little invitation code. That is on the website, gunnarengblom.com. There you find it. It's my sort of personal blog where I put sort of unrelated bird not related to birds, some of my running and the movies and stuff and things that I've been seeing. All right, so that was all. Um, my uh, wife is on me here, calling me all the time, saying that I should get on going. We are supposed to do some shopping. So I see you here next time. Uh, have a good one and um, bye.